Hi, it's Wayne. We're going to do some weaving today um, on my Ashford loom. Um, we're weaving with paper, silk, real raw wool, a little bit of metallic, and uh, possibly anything else we find. It's very, very freeform and exciting, so join us. <laughs> linen and then I have various um, paper as the as the weft um, this is Japanese this very very thin uh, and it's all very strong you expect it to actually break quite easily but it doesn't and there's some raffia some just raw raffia there and most of the colorways that I use are quite natural rather than the rather bright ones like the ones I'm wearing at the moment um, amongst this, which I really, really love, is some silk wrapped in, sorry, steel wrapped in silk, and uh, I'll explain that a bit in more detail later. This uh, looks very uh, Tom Brown, I think, with the uh, very uniform type stripes. Again, that's all silk um, with a, a memory steel inside, very, very thin actually ends up weaving really well and it's more defined than this part here. You can see how close together that weaves and uh, what great effect it gives. This is one of the more interesting yarns I work with, um, which I described a little bit about before earlier, but um, in more detail, it is actually um, stainless steel, very, very fine, thin stainless steel, and it's wrapped in silk. So the finished yarn is a, has got like a metallic, um, memory about it so this stretches ever so slightly um, and it, it's almost like a bit like chain mail but it's very very light it's very very comfortable to wear and um, painstakingly I've woven these um, they're almost like an, uh, an item of, of neckwear really uh, almost like a cowl that goes over uh, the head and can act almost like a, a bit of like a balaclava 
you can put it over your face um, and still obviously breathe through it. Um, some of this dark, this lighter coloured um, yarn is just to sort of strengthen the the end, um, and that is woven from uh, very very strong white uh, bleached linen. This part is the more uh, metallic stuff, the silk and, and steel, which has, as I said, the memory. Um, and it sort of resembles a, a cobweb. It's just the most amazing thing. I am hoping that I'll be able to make some sort of uh, even sleeves or collars for shirts or just even the whole garment out of it once um, I experiment a little bit more with it. Um, these are, oops, sorry. These are quite complicated and uh, fragile to make, but they, they're strong once they're actually all done. And uh, that's my, my label. So um, just to recap on what I've done already, um, sorry, not recap, but introduce you to what I've done already. Um, I'm just going to, I've got this in, in neutral now, I'm just going to go back and show you some of the weave that I've worked on already. Um, the initial idea for this was that it was going to be completely um, a single cream type colour. And... Um, Sorry, I'll just get this bit easier for it, that's best. Um, so an, an original, the original idea was to get a cream type colour but colour way, but to be honest, what happens, I get a little bit bored doing the same um, colour and even if I change the texture but it's similar um, neutral colours, sometimes I just need a pop of something else and, and so unfortunately I probably spoiled it by doing that. But basically this is uh, this is what we've got so far. So most of the piece is uh, made out of um, paper um, and this varies between this Japanese uh, paper, which is the very thin, almost net-like um, textures that you see here, um, and some more commercial raffia. This is, um, I think this is uh, creative paper by, uh, is it Rico? Um, and then some of the other stuff is just uh, the rough raffia, the raw sort of raffia in almost natural colours, um, which I think you can get from places like Paper Chase, um, but certainly offline. Um, this part here is some Indian paper which I've bought from an art shop and basically um, cut into strips. So each one of those pieces go, going on here is uh, part of a, a strip of, of paper that I've cut. So there's no uh, turning round with that and, and weaving it. I just basically just do the strip and then change. Um, the heddle um, and you can see the different effects that it has uh, more of a, like a basket wear type look here with the commercial stuff and um, a little bit more of uh, a drapey uh, effect with the Japanese section. I've started off here um, the, the warp, which I've mentioned already, probably is is to is with very strong linen, which holds everything together really, really well. And I started off here with just a very small amount of very soft. If I don't know if you can see that there, where am I? Very sort of soft cashmere um, with a little bit of a blue fleck in it. You can just pick out some of the blue there, and that's just to tighten things up at the very beginning, um, and then carrying on with the paper. I'll start wheeling that in now so you can get a better idea of it. Um, there is the Japanese stuff, there's the paper, the, sorry, the creative paper 
and then to make it more wearable there's some of the art paper and to make it more wearable i've then combined it with alpaca um, and this is all the alpaca now and there's some soft um just very natural alpaca there um, and then i've gone for a more um curly sort of alpaca similar colors left some threads hanging out there just for a bit of texture and a bit of interest and then i got bored and went completely against everything i've been doing and used some a metallic strip um of yarn with some tiny tiny sequins in um, my partner's telling me to get rid of that part and probably I will, I don't know, see what it looks like at the end. Then an interesting thing happened. Um, my cousin has, uh, her husband has a farm and um, is able to give me some f uh, fleeces when they shear the sheep. And this has arrived three boxes full of it and it's just raw, um, raw sheep fleece that needs actually um, washing. So I've washed this in an industrial sort of washing machine um, as a place of work, which I um, don't need to go into. And basically um, that has come up as a sort of very rough, raw felted, semi-felted mass of wool. Um, now ordinarily I would have uh, 500 quid to buy an Ashford E spinner which I think looks absolutely amazing um, and start spinning my own yarn and that's what I'd love to do in the future but for the time being I've just got chunks of it and just stuck it in and that's what I'm going to do a little bit more of um, this afternoon. Um, to bind that and make sure it's really really stable obviously I've got the uh, linen, uh, the linen warp and then I've also um, wedged it in with some more alpaca so I'll just carry on a little bit with the alpaca and then possibly uh, get a bit more of the, the rough raw wool. Uh, the, I, the fabulous thing about this is obviously when the garment's actually finished we can provide a little label with an actual photograph on of the actual sheep that it came from. Um, and it's not soft, it's not soft and fluffy like the alpaca, but it certainly is really, gonna be really, really warm and rugged. And it's, there's just something really nice about it and it adds the most incredible texture, um, even without uh, spinning um, properly. Little bits of it do come off. Um, so that's going to be a little bit annoying, um, but it depends what we use it for. At the final, if it's gonna be a garment, it's gonna be, uh, more troublesome probably but still worth it because what fabulous rustic thing to be wearing um, yeah so the next part is just to carry on with some of this curly alpaca to hold everything in place <laughs> 